Well, yeah. welcome back to the Whiskey and Wisdom podcast, everyone. Hey, I hope you got all of your um, drama going on in the rap community. You don't community. need TNT anymore. <laughs> right. <That's> what... <laughs> so what happens it. when we have our conversations before the podcast starts. So everyone who's watching live, you're welcome. So, <laughs> um, so like you said, welcome back. Constant co-host Chris Kellum and Tyler Yaw. Tyler Yaw. Um, and today we have these lovely ladies with us. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name's Sammy McGee, um, and this is Amelia Smith. We are both uh, hairstylists and business owners in Wilmington. Nice. Uh, we started together-ish. Well, we're gonna, uh, so we'll let you tell the story. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we started, uh, I met Sammy when I left another salon, and then we somehow took over your grandmother's salon, mm -hmm. and oh, wow. that's how Sammy and I met, and we worked together for how many years? Mm. A long, like, like eight years. Yeah, she eight? was my boss. Yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. She still is my boss. <laughs> but we don't. Unofficially? Yeah. Uh, like anytime something happens like business related, I always call her because I know that like, A, she's going to give me like the realest advice that I need. Mm -hmm. Like she's not going to sugarcoat it, but she's also she's just good. Like I was like, if I never work for myself, I will work for you forever and always. Mm -hmm. And there will always be a place for Sammy because... I got mad love for her. <laughs> yeah, but she's like, she's, if I had like a, a, a well, I guess you are like my fairy hair godmother. <laughs> and you're like, um, like my baby girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we go but, way back. Yeah. I'd love to hear yeah. that. Uh -huh. Before we go too deep into it, what's everybody drinking today? Um, I have a Jack and Coke. Classic. classic. Yeah. Yes. Very classic. It's very much has a home at my house on the show. <laughs> No. Nice. I am drinking um the special, which is the bourbon smash. Yeah. It is so good. Yes. Good and for those who this. don't know, it is on special over at Alcove. Mm -hmm. Um we we partnered with them because we're we're as you know, we're live at Azalea Station and their sister sister bars. Yeah. Um I'm drinking the same thing. So yeah. it is That's delicious. Really can't wait. It, it is, looks refreshing. I'm hoping that the bartender will bring the other one over here. Yeah. Um, it'll be on we special can, all month. Send someone over oh. here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The whole month of July. Mm -hmm. So if you get bored and when you leave leave well, the my shop. my clients love it when it hits like 5 p.m. around here and the <laughs> bar opens back oh, up yeah. and like Let's go. Still in the I'm same building. <laughs> exactly. we'll, we'll take a break and yeah. pause. Yeah. Walk through with your foils and uh -huh. just look outside. Yes. Right. <laughs> Um, hmm. Yeah, so we kind of all connected because we were neighbors at one point. Yeah. Um, we've had to move our own separate directions. But I know. Yeah, unfortunately. But that was awesome having you guys in here, too. And then also, you know, the one of our previous guests. Yeah, Christina. Right? Christina. Yeah, she is a client of mine. And over the years, we've just gotten closer and closer. And now we're like, I call her my... My wife, yeah, because like she's got her children, and then she'll grab mine, go to their house. But we, we became best friends like through. She, I'm the whole reason she came here. Right. Don't yeah. let her tell you anything different. <laughs> so she's, makes sense. Though. Yeah. So we're moving into over here, and she's like, "Well, now I can't just walk through the building and see you anymore." <laughs> right. And I'm like, "You'll just have to walk outside." I was gonna say, yeah. Now it's just cross parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how long ago did you guys get started in here? What made you want to get into that? um industry oh i wow. actually would like to know your side of it because i know you know mine thank you i'll either, take the I'll, little one because yeah, I, I still either way the straw is going to come out so she doesn't so. know i'm going to put it on her tab uh, oh yeah. oh thank you so i actually went to college and um got my degree in broadcast journalism oh okay and i worked at fox 22 um as an assignment desk editor for oh, wow like maybe a year and I realized I hated it mm -hmm. and I hated the people that worked in that industry. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, Oh, what am I going to do? So I went and I got a job at like the farm bureau doing data entry. And I pretty right. much just wanted to kill myself every day on the way to work. And I was driving into oncoming traffic. It was awful. Um, and I said, is this it? Is this what there is? And do I have to do this nine to five grind? Is that right. what it is? And finally, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to hair school. Started as a joke. My father was uh, a hairdresser in New York City. Okay. From the 50s to the 70s, he worked in the uh, theater district. Oh, uh, yeah. And he would tell me stories here and there. Um, 
so I went to my mom and I was like, mom, I think I'm going to go to hair school. And she said, I don't care what you do now. You got your degree. And I was like, <laughs> great. Yeah. So $60,000 later, right. I went to hair school and I started and the day one, I was like, this is it. I fell in love. And, you know, every day is a vacation for me because I love my job. I mean, you know, you pretty much play all day and yeah. bullshit with clients and play with hair. But, I mean, there's more to it. Uh, of but, course, you know, yeah. I could tell you the dark side, but... There's <laughs> a very dark side. There is a very dark side. But, um, you know, it's... Other than, but it's just, it's a really great... People, when you touch them like that, yeah. some of them haven't been touched at all yeah. in a mm -hmm. day or two or a week. Or you get and, a message after yeah. where you, like, completely, like... You yeah. ask that one question that someone needed to ask them for a yeah. while, and yeah. it, like, it stays with them. Yeah. 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 So we really are unlicensed psychologists. Oh right. <laughs> like, there are times I've like cried myself to sleep. Oh yeah, I actually had to fire a client one time because it was just I couldn't. Oh yeah, like oh, I, wow. I felt like the minute that like I booked her again, that I was already having anxiety about mm -hmm. like the next time, and like the breakup was just like I kept trying to be like, oh maybe I can get by with like not booking her, just be really busy, but then somehow like. There were some like other things that were going on. Yeah. But I just realized like, it was like so negative. And I have like that empathic heart where I think most people who do hair do, where I'm sure, like, yeah. she's leaving so much negative energy with me that like by the time I get to my fifth client, like we don't, I don't know if I can do it. Like, right. or if I go home, I'm just like cry my eyes out for hours and I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with me. So I just had to tell her, I'm like, unfortunately, we are not the best fit for each other. Right. And like, I thank you for our time together, but like, it's not open for discussion. I wish you the best. Mm. Yeah. That's that's huge, like, step for yeah. a business owner. Yeah. And especially, like, a small business owner to be yeah. able to say, like, hey, you know what? This isn't working out. Because, like, especially when you first start, you're like, yeah. I'll take anyone and everyone at any time. Yeah. You're, like, trying then, to get them to break up with you. You're yeah, like, exactly. maybe, maybe you want to try, like, somebody else. But at this point, I had exhausted every route. And I was like... I can't even offer. I don't Wait, want it. Is that the girl that you sent to me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was before I broke up with her. <laughs> Wait, I didn't. I forgot I did that. Uh oh. That, uh oh. You did. <laughs> it was. It was just bad. She was on her best behavior when she came to me because I was just like, you know, she was like, oh, I'm just. I couldn't get in with Sammy, so Sammy told me to come to you. But I'm going back to Sammy. Okay. All right. Cool. I was like, I just do it so good that she like. Yeah. Because I hadn't, I hadn't reached that point of like, boss babe, <laughs> attitude yet. Yeah. Like I was like, I really just want to make people happy, and I realized it was taking a toll on me. Where she is a lot further in our careers, where she's just like, yeah, no. <laughs> and so yeah. then eventually, nice. when I did that, like it was honestly one of the best days in my career because I was like, I can say no. Like mm -hmm. I can. I can do that. And then now it's like. That's huge. Right. It's huge. It's a huge step for a hairdresser. We want to give a shout out to Jen Independent Stylist Podcast. And her. Amen. <laughs> she's, a, she's a girl on TikTok who like. I she found turned, her on Instagram. Yeah. And sure. she, she has this workbook on like how you can text back your clients and how to set boundaries and how to do pricing. And I remember coming to her and like we were kind of having this chat about like I need to make this and I need to do better. And like. She, I was like, but I'm scared. And she goes, if someone's going to charge that much in town, why can't it be you? Right. Mm. And I was like, Good you're point. right. Okay. And so it had all these like ways. And I actually like copy and paste it when I was breaking up with the woman. I was like, this is what we're going to do. Because she had already just like, oh. she would just like show yeah. up. She mm. thought I, like I didn't answer phone calls. So she thought like I had gotten in a car accident. But really it was like my weekend Right. Did not work. Well, that's another so, thing. Boundaries are huge. You know, yeah. I will get texts. It starts three o'clock in the morning at 9 a.m. I will start getting texts. And then by, you know, seven o'clock at night, eight o'clock at night, it's still going on. And, you know, my boyfriend's like, who's texting you at this hour? And I'm like, oh, it's a client. Yep. They never Flip. believe us. Turn, yeah, turn the phone over. And, you know, now I've just started, if it's not my working hours, they just stay on, you know, unread. <laughs> I got Patty one time though. Somebody messaged me at like three o'clock in the morning, and like it's when if you can apologize before you send the message. Yeah, like I can so, be a little bit more understanding. Yeah. But if it's like, hey, so I was thinking about bangs and blah 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 blah, and then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna send her multiple messages back 
at like 5.30 in the morning when I get up. It's going to be like, hey, good morning. Sorry for messaging you so early and just let it ding, 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 ding. And she's like, oh, I'm really sorry. I messaged you at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, no, it's fine at that time. I don't really know how to compose a full <laughs> message back yeah. to someone. But, you and know. If it, you had like an Android phone, you could actually schedule when to send your messages. That is really cool about Android. I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah. Why I, can't I phone? Why can't I? Like why can't I? Why can't I phone? Why can't we I do can't it? go down that uh, path? Was I that's a whole other. That's a whole, already. <laughs> that's a whole yeah. Chris rant. Um, I didn't know that wasn't an option. So like I work with a bunch of people and everyone like there's three of us who'd have non iPhones and I'll sit there and I'll like schedule a message because I'll think about it. I'm like I'm trying to get better at it. if I think about it I need to write it right and so I'll say it. But I'm like oh it's after business hours so I'll hit the button schedule send at like eight the next morning. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing stuff, and it'll be like, oh, hey, someone responds. I'm like, oh, I forgot I sent this. Yeah. But, like. That's amazing. So yeah. amazing. I don't know why iPhone doesn't do that. It's like, get with the program. Mm-hmm. That, uh, right. There's so many things iPhone can do. That's actually, like, so amazing because I feel like that, like, especially my hands are always, like, in color or wet. Yes. yes. So, yeah. like, when I think about it, I'm like, let me just, Siri, can you just. Yeah. And then if it could just send it at the appropriate time, that would be. Siri, I'm You might she's... be getting the update, though. Oh. They're doing like there's a new iOS update. I do want the like I want the flip phone option. Nothing made oh, me feel yeah. cool yeah. when you like oh. hang up on somebody. And you're like, there right? is. There, like, in my true. day, it was oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that felt good. Yeah. Cool. I mean, there is the Moto. So Moto Razr yes. is back, I, so you can flip. I saw that. And Samsung has a flip phone now. So I'm actually intrigued to like find out about the Moto because I heard the tune while I was like walking around the house, and I was like, no way. Because I feel that's like the, I definitely had it. That's yeah. oh, it's, that's it's the kids will never know. No, <laughs> exactly. They, they, <laughs> I saw something. They were like, "What was your original cell phone?" Or like, "What was your first phone?" It was all these things, and like Razer was like the yeah. bottom row. And yeah. I was like, I was too broke to start with a Razer, so yeah. I got like the cheap brother of it, so it didn't have that hard click to it. God, I love that. God, so I think sad. my first one. I had a BlackBerry. I had that was Blackberry P. I had the old yeah. the old Nokia that you could literally be underground mm-hmm. making oh, phone right. calls. Oh, the Nokia was that great. You I had like, like the light up antenna. Like the, yes, the exactly. te- yeah, like I had all like okay. When you text, you had it was the old fashioned like phone. We had to be A one. Take oh yeah. B two. It was like you had to like push the. What buttons. would our clients? I just can't even imagine being a hairstylist back then. Trying to like text thinking clients. about like how far like we've come where people can like. Go to our website, go to our booking link, make their own right. appointment, and then we can approve, deny. But you can send us an email. Now you can text us to let in, you know. There's so many and ways all that, the like. reminders. I used to have to call people. Hi, this is Amelia. I'm just calling uh, to remind you of your appointment next Tuesday at 3 o'clock. Oh, I Do used to work to the front res- desk yeah, for you. I know. Before. I was slow. You used to run the front desk? Well, yeah, because I had, like, just started. When I first started working for them, I had, like, four or five jobs. Yeah. I was... We're she gonna, was a work, she's work, hustler. We were hustler. we're gonna put this out there. Hustler, I was a Hooters baby. girl, second time. Yeah. I was a Miller Lite girl. Yes. Yeah. I worked at a girl like six thirty in the morning till like eleven thirty came in. I um taught my age a dance team for the Wilmington Sea Dogs. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And then I did the little league, which eventually I brought her on to be the mascot at <laughs> yeah. the games. Like, so, that's just how great she is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be the mascot because so I was like, this mascot sucks. This mascot's just walking around in circles. Of course, once I, I became like, the mascot, I understood why. Like, this was ah, really okay. hot. But <laughs> I was at least trying. <laughs> it did. It was awful there at the end. Because they moved us to, like, uh, the Blizzard Athletics. So, yeah. we, like, we just mm-hmm. had, like, two rows of seats and still having to go out there and do, our, like, our dance performances and smile. And we're like, there's, like, five people here. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I'd be out there. Who let the dogs out? And I'd be yeah. like, That's awesome. I just, this, you know. That's what was salty. Salty <laughs> the sea dog, Yeah. I didn't even know about that. I didn't either. You didn't no? know about the Wilmington Sea Dog? They were around forever. That's oh, and sad. No, no, like I knew about them. I just didn't watch sports back then. Oh. Like not in I don't watch sports I'd either. like to say <laughs> that everybody came to the game for us, but, you know. Probably. I mean, no. Possibly. D- don't get me wrong. <laughs> the guys are great. Yeah. But like in the beginning when it first had started, it was like, it was such a big thing in this town because it was like semi-pro basketball. Like yes. they brought in all, I mean, there were people from like the Bahamas here and like just all over. And it uh-huh. was like, I remember I was like, my life is changing. <laughs> I'm going to be like a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. <laughs> oh. Even though, you know. And now there's a whole like 
Netflix special. Oh, it was great. PCC. It was great. Watch it. And, yeah. Yeah. Actually, my daughter got into it too. Like, it was pretty great. So, so how'd you get started then? Thank you. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So, my grandmother is like a founding father of hairstylist <laughs> in Wilmington. Oh, wow. So, she had a salon at Riceville Beach, is where I grew up. Oh, okay. Um, And it was, uh, it's actually, I think it's like Chops, no. It was Chops Deli. It was the Taco Bell. Oh, Behind yeah. there was where her salon was. So I was basically like raised in the salon was with- what, Nancy's? Yeah, Nancy's hair cutters. So mm-hmm. like at any, if anybody that lived at the beach- mm-hmm. Came there. Yeah. yeah. This place. And oh, yeah. so I was raised in it and I remember saying like, I'm not going to do hair. I'm going to be a veterinarian. Like they're <laughs> like, and I'm just like, I'm allergic to dog saliva now. So like it would have never worked <laughs> oh, out. Wow. But I remember getting into like high school because my mom worked there too. She did nails. Mm. Um, so I remember getting into high school and I had been competitive dancing my whole entire life. And so makeup just kind of became like one of those things I got into. And then I really just loved like plucking my friend's eyebrows and like curling their hair. And then I don't know, I took a year off after high school and one of my friends was in hair school and I was like, how was school today? And so I went and that's kind of like where it started, and I went to go do my apprenticeship at my grandmother's salon because I knew it would be easy. Right. They would let me start working immediately without, like, you're supposed to do, like, six months of, like, training before, right, yeah. but they immediately let me start working, and it was a different time, mm-hmm. and I had to learn. I mean, I remember having a guy walk out and, like, getting mad because I didn't know how to do a Caesar haircut. The Caesar. Yeah. And I Don't remember like this. crying because I was like, they didn't teach us how to do men's haircut in school. Yeah. There's but so now, much that they don't teach. There's so, so many much. questions to that too. Yeah. Like, what, what's the Caesar's haircut? I think. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Let's let. George Clooney. Yeah. Where it's like early 2000s where it was all forward. Oh, yeah. Oh, short on the oh, okay. side. You know, yeah. like in the, the, the boys in like middle school were like gelling it like, Gosh. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, Unjelt. go watch any Roman movie, and you'll see the like that. <laughs> it was quite literally a fade, right? Like yeah. it was a very harsh fade, but like it just went up and just stopped. Like, I, okay, I see what you're saying. But see, and after the Caesar, then they took of... it and just spiked it the front, yeah. and that was the next iteration of. Yeah. But it, it was just the audacity of this guy. Like all he had to do was just talk to me about it, and I would have figured it out. Right. But... I love I love doing men's haircuts now. Like I work so much easier than women. It's just mm, fun. It's different. It's different. Like it's very intricate, right? Like one one cough from them when you're cleaning up the back of their neck and like game over. <laughs> True. Yeah. But like just men in general, actually like our little salon, like we have so many guys that come to us and I wanna say like it's because we do a good job. Mm-hmm. But like it's not the same that you're gonna get from a barber, right? Like a barber's very like Josh, different. yeah, his handsome self over there with his <laughs> his gears and all this other stuff. Like I'm like, you do you, but we we have like this the salt. I say it the saltier yes. version mm. of it. Like you know, it's right. very different. Like from moving from place to place. Yeah, at, like my brain comprehends because I work in jewelry. Like it's the difference between going from like. Everyone sells jewelry, but right. they don't all specialize in the same thing. Mm-hmm. Like some places do more watches, some do custom, some people do more like gemstones. Where you right. ladies are like, I can do, you do amazing men's haircuts, right? But it's a different experience than if you go and see Josh, right? And you're the only person in there, and you can chat it up. Yeah, and he's like, got the whole. His is good. It's a it's a different like vibe, a lounge yeah. which is different than that. going to like a traditional barber shop mm. where everyone's sitting there. And I'm like, hey, you know what time? I'm trying to get my hair cut. Yeah, and, like, and you guys are hanging all day. Three right. hours, I'm like. Well, that's why we didn't want to like, originally when we were naming my salon, we were going to go Dirty bl- or dirty Blonde Salon. Mm-hmm. I think, or yes, that's what we were going to do. And then I was like, it's too girly. We wanted to have something. And now like we both are no longer Hill and Clutch, right? It's like she yeah. got married, I got divorced. So like. She's a Shannon. I'm back to McGee. Mm-hmm. But it is like the brand that we built. But even when decorating it, I was like, I don't want to do anything too girly in here. So we kept a lot of greens, a lot of blues, because like I wanted I wanted the guys to like walk in and yeah. still feel like they weren't like walking into. You see, and I went. So when I first got into the industry, you didn't specialize. You did everything. You did right. perms. You did men's cuts. Oh, yeah. You can't turn anything down. No, yeah. You <laughs> yeah, just exactly. did it all. You get pregnant, then you can. Yeah. Right. And now, you know, our industry has become very niched. There are people mm-hmm. who specialize in just blondes. There are people who specialize in 
there are women who are hairdressers who specialize in just men's cuts mm -hmm. and women who specialize in just, you know, um, extensions where I specialize in curls. Mm. So, I got a bad review about that. That's the only bad review I have, everyone, is that someone thought I was a curl specialist, and I am not. <laughs> she is. <laughs> See, to me, oh, it's, she lit it's me also up. really silly because, like, you walk in, you have nice, gorgeous, straight hair. Thank you. You have really curly hair. I would want to. To me, I would naturally go to you and be yeah. like, hey, I'm sure you're a curl specialist. Mm -hmm. That'd be me getting mad at, like, a Caucasian barber who, like, can't do a proper fade. Yeah, right. I'm like, you do a really good one, but right, old dude's better. Well, yeah. she said that uh, it had listed on our website that we were curl specialists. We don't have it listed anywhere, so I don't know if <laughs> during her Googling, whatever, and my, she probably got confused. And my herself. thought process is like, what I've learned from you from back then is like, I have people, now correct me if I'm wrong, but this is, this is Amelia in my head when I'm looking at a curly client. I say, come in with the way that you naturally wear your hair with your curls. And then I go in and kind of like spritz it and kind of like, it, and then I go in and cut. She complained about that. No, and then she, <laughs> some people will just complain about anything. I was going to say, yeah. 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 Her, so her name was probably Karen. But I used chat GPT to like get back at her. Oh, good. There you go. Yeah. Like <laughs> I was like, I need to sound educated and I know. Chat GPT, tell me how to. <laughs> that I think. That's the way to use AI. Is right. my one thing I wish I could do oh. on like reviews is just clap back at stupid people. Oh, I did. Like, I'm, I get bored and like, I got really fancy a few years ago. I was like, oh, I'm taking pictures while I'm traveling. Let me just leave reviews of like good places. And then I'm like, but there's that one person who leaves a bad review and I, and I look at it and, and they're like, I had someone say, oh, they ignored me while I was waiting in line. And I, I hope they don't judge a book by its cover. And I really want to be like, cool, well, man, real talk. How busy were they? Yeah. Was everyone in there talking to somebody else? Right. Like, well, no so one cares what you look like. Right. We don't... <laughs> right. She said that she didn't feel important. So the how I clapped back was I, I went even further than I probably should have gone. Because <laughs> yeah. I was upset at first. We had PTSD from, you know. Yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. So I was like, I was like, I had to go back and look and see. It was her first time there. Um, like she had made the comment about how she didn't feel like a priority because I was obviously doing my friend's hair. But if you have been with a hairstylist for more than one or two times, you're my people now. Like I'm right. going to talk to you about your weekend and we're going to kiki it up and like make jokes with you. Like that's, I will be immature for life. I'm serious in most aspects, but like I joke around a lot and you're mm -hmm. once my friend, always my friend. I don't care if you're not my chair or not. So she said that, but then she tried to make me look bad that she drove a half hour. Okay. And I was running, and I let her know I was running like 10 minutes behind. But when people fill out like their questionnaire to come see me, I do know where their addresses are. And so I put it in and I'm like, you're literally seven minutes <laughs> from the salon. <laughs> and so I just used my chat GPT. I was like, you know, we like to be considerate because we don't have a front desk like most places. So right. if I can get a second to send you a message to let you know, like I'm running behind, I just don't want you to feel like you have to sit there and watch me. Cut someone else's ear. Right. I can't help what's going to happen down in here. Some people lie to me about box color. Or they're like, oh, I want to chop all my hair off. I forgot to let you know. Yeah. Or right. my mind up in the car. Right. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You'll set aside time like, you know, an uh, hour and a half for a color retouch. And I'm like, you know, I think I want some highlights. <laughs> like, and you're like, well, you want the money. And then you're like a greedy mm -hmm. biatch. I'm like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean. Real talk, it's money. Scheduling you know? is probably like the And that's how we make our money. We make our money on our time. Time is money. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I when I worked at the day spa, there was You worked at a day spa? Yeah. Chris has done many a things. Mm -hmm. But not many were duplicated. Like I Okay. Like I did it to learn. I was like, okay, I like this. I don't mm -hmm. like that. We'll do this. Um, I worked at a day spa because they were like, Hey, we like you. Like the owners had seen me at at my other job, I'm like, hey, we like you. We want your personality. Show up. And so I worked there for a little bit. And that's when I realized how much it was true. Like, time is money. Because there was one lady who'd be like, all right, cool. I looked at her book, and it was like side by side. Like, someone's getting this done. Mm -hmm. And while this is getting done, she has somebody else dropped in. So that way they can, while their yeah. hair, their color setting, they're in there cutting this lady's hair. And I was like, oh, she's doing it. Hey. 
I, I feel like I made more money when I had the availability and the space to have an assistant. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like that was, especially when I was pregnant and I was like sick all the time. I would like look, Brandon, Brandon, he's in yeah. the cargo district. Yeah. He's, he was my assistant. Oh, yeah. oh no, I'll tell okay. you that I'm the reason why he started doing hair, but I would look at him from across the building and he would see the look on my face and he would step in so quick. My clients wouldn't even know that I had like walked off. Right. <laughs> like I was like, you're amazing. But like he just had my back like that and I was able to like, do double in a day. Oh, absolutely. Like when what? I my I can assistant work. on That's point. Crazy. I can I can be triple booked, yeah. and oh, I usually wow. am. If she's if she's if I'm not fighting her for my friend Leisha, with my friend Leisha because usually it's like she's worth fighting oh, for. Yeah. <laughs> she was going to be the other person the if she couldn't do it. Yeah. Um. Then because in our salon there's three stylists and okay. um our nail person and uh the three stylists sometimes will fight over our assistant. So I'll be like, so you know you got a good one. I'm sorry. That's how you know you got a good one. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. She's, she's good. Um, is it the same one that did wedding with me and Leisha? So Leisha, her girl, no, and I used Teresa. to work together, and we became like this. Oh, uh, okay. And me and Amelia were like this. Well, they both ended up at a salon suites together, and I opened up my Instagram one day, and she, she's like, her and Leisha are going into business together. I'm like, how dare you both take <laughs> each other from me? <laughs> Rude. But I love yeah, it, honestly. Yeah. yeah, and so and then we moved from Sola. Just Sola's a great space. But we, it was two of us in a 200 square foot room mm -hmm. and we double book each. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, before COVID, it was great. People, uh, there were, you know, women oh, sitting God, on the couch, having champagne, sitting outside. Oh, yeah. having, it was like a party in there all yeah. the time. But since COVID, we couldn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's when I moved over to Oleander and mm -hmm. opened up Natural Beauty so we would have more space. And now you mm -hmm. go in there and sometimes all the chairs are filled. The couch is filled. People are sitting in the back at the dryer. It, it can get pretty crazy wow. in there. Yeah. I love that life, though. So. Yeah. But, you know, that's that's good fun, you know, when there's lots. And, and we all know each other's clients. And that's yeah. the other thing in this industry is it used to be, well, it probably still is in some places, but I feel like there's so much competitiveness between hairstylists. Oh. Mm. And there really doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. Right. Because there's enough people in this town and there's you can literally get in your car and go right or left. You can go to where PTs is off a of college, and you can find a whole plethora. Yeah, true, there's yeah. literally a they're all yeah, right there, every corner. Because someone gets pissed off, and is like, "Well, I'm gonna go open up my own salon," and that's what they do a block down the road. And so, you know, you can go anywhere. Yeah. So, really, I think as hairstylists, we need to learn to work together. For sure, mm -hmm. we got it. Yeah. Oh, we got it. Yeah. And I don't have a, you know, if I've got a client who doesn't like the way I do their hair, please go to Leisha, go to Teresa, go down the street. Go to yeah. Sammy, you know, go right. somewhere else. Or if I'm busy, I always send them. Yeah, you know, and I think that that is how it needs to be. We need to re really collaborate. But yeah. anyway. That's and the fine. crap talking about other people. Like, oh. I don't, when people sit in my chair and I see, like, not great work, I'm not like, who did this? <laughs> no. You're right. Mm -mm. Is this your client? Yeah. <laughs> see, yeah. I do ask, like, I, like, I've asked questions, and the reason I ask is to learn, right? like, what that person's style is so then I can... Right. Make adjustments. Yeah. Right. Oh, you're used to this person. Okay, cool. Well, then I'll, like, I'll help you. Obviously, I don't cut hair. Yeah. Right. Um, but, like, in my in my business, if I know someone's used to working with a certain person, I know, oh, you're used to talking and spending, you know, 30, right. 45 minutes in here. Or you're used to just walking in saying, hey, I'm just looking around. Cool. Peace. So. Yeah. I think that's why Paige and I work so well, because we are very close but we're polar opposites mm -hmm. she's very if there were two of me in a salon you kill each other i don't know if much would get done <laughs> no I, I don't know <laughs> but like where is like if she's not in her talk out of mood that day not that she's moody at yeah, all she's not right. she just takes takes a lot so even with like a new client it takes a lot so i'm like if you want a more quieter person Paige's chair is where you want to go yeah, yeah. Paige but then is very like she's just um, very like yeah. Mm. She reminds me of like a little butterfly going across the smooth <laughs> I like that. ocean. <laughs> just, just yeah, like a little unicorn. Like that's just that's her. She's great at what she does, but mm. like if her clients are in chatty mood, they'll normally just kind of chime in over where I am, and then oh, it's yeah. you yeah. know. And in our salon, there's usually yelling and screaming, and someone's throwing things. It's usually Johnny. Oh. He's our nail person. Oh, my And gosh. he's extra, but Forget fabulous. at what he does. Fabulous. Yeah. 
He can make a nail out of nothing. Yeah, he can. Oh, wow. And yeah. he can do anything on a nail. Mm -hmm. um, and then Leisha, you know, she's loud. Sometimes I can't even hear my clients over her and her clients talking. Yeah. And I'm going deaf anyway, so that's not good. And then there's Teresa, who's so sweet. She started as our assistant. That's who I was asking about. Yes. She does beautiful makeup. Her and Leisha work together on weddings a lot. And she does absolutely beautiful makeup. She does great hair. And she's got straight hair, but is a curl specialist mm. as well. Mm. And she's bilingual, which is fantastic because yeah. that I... The dream of my <laughs> salon is to be multicultural. Yeah. Like, there's not a single white person working there. There's, you know, Hispanics, Native American, black, and we take all kinds of hair types. We ain't scared. Um, so I love that energy. And, but back to Teresa anyway, I just had to sidebar there. Um, Teresa, she started as our assistant and then, you know, worked through school. And then she got on a chair and she's doing great. But mm. she is so good at really consulting and explaining things to the client. She's good at taking direction. Very good. She got mm. le I don't want to say she got left with me. Because <laughs> I have my wedding business side. Mm -hmm. So that's Port uh, okay. City Pretty. Um, and it's already been going for a while. I just hesitated like naming it because I'm a psycho. And I just wanted it to be. And then after a while, I was like, God, that's actually really cute. It is cute. Yeah, thanks. It's like catchy. It. Thanks. Yeah. I'm going to have her interview me later for a job, see if I can get a job. Mm, yeah, they that was pretty. Oh, that's what you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought she was <laughs> like, like oh. I'm here. I'm like, never ask this question. <laughs> you? Um, but she, this Teresa got like left with me at a wedding because Alicia had to go. And she was so good at like taking direction for me, like yeah. where I was like, no, just do this. Like she hopped right in and I'm like, there needs to be more of you in this industry that's like not oh scared gosh. to like, have a strong personality come to you and be like, this is because like, I'm telling Scar. you exactly what you need to do. Don't be scared at all. Just get in there, get it done. That girl, good. she is just on it. I mean, when she was our assistant, I never had to tell her anything. The only thing is she was so good at organizing that sometimes I would go and look for something and be like, I don't know where it is. I would have made pens. a <laughs> Oh, Teresa reorganized. Oh, okay. Teresa, was it pens? <laughs> yeah. Great. Just tell me where it is. <laughs> so, question. Mm -hmm. What is her generation? Oh, she is 21. She's Gen Z. Mm -hmm. Listen. So is mine. I'm Gen X. And I can tell you right now that I am grateful for the millennials and the Gen Zers. I'm a Gen Zer, by the you way. You guys. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you you guys, you. the millennials and the Gen Zers, they don't put up with anything mm -hmm. and they will protest they will it kind of reminds me of how the boomers used to be when they were teenagers when they were teenagers yeah. you know and now they're just you know eating whatever is given to them right now but mm -hmm. i i have i have a lot of respect for the millennials and the gen zers i i see good things coming were you at one million cups a while ago? i was yes i thought yeah wait what were you doing there why not support I locally? Talking. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> Where is it? I was so it's uh, a with, coffee place. No. Oh, okay. It, so it's a business thing, um, and it's one million cups of coffee. You can, might be able to explain it better, but yeah, the talking. they bring in local business people and they just talk about what their business is and kind oh. of what you're accomplishing. And the, the gist of it is, you go in not to pitch yourself, but just to say what you're up to in the community mm -hmm. and how. The main part of it is they'll ask you what they could, what can the community do to help you? Uh, yeah, yeah, so it kind of takes the script and flips it. I want to go. Yeah, where they're, is they're it? always looking for it. Jack is one of the guys, and um, where is it at? It's at uh, UNTW. UNTW. Yeah, at the entrepreneurship CIE. building. Yep, oh. it's the CIE building, Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. It was really cool. Yeah. I just got up there and talked about natural beauty and how it started and kind of what it's turned into and mm -hmm. the fact that. I see a future, I, the way I want to see salons in the future, because salons are actually one of the main places that are still really segregated. Mm. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Like, think mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. A very segregated part of society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we need to get past that because hair is hair is hair. It's all fiber. That is so true now that I'm yeah. thinking about it. Yeah. But going back to the school part, yeah. in schools... They're not taught about texture. They're not mm -hmm. taught mm -hmm. about, you know, how to work with hair in a three-dimensional concept. It's it's still very basic. Um, I thought so, it was really neat when you were talking about it because usually there it's like a bunch of white guys that are yeah. sitting in that thing. Oh. And so you were talking about that and everyone was like, whoa, 
like you could just see it like <laughs> yeah just, like, like it just like hit for a minute yeah, yeah. they're like oh my gosh i, think I never it just thought of that to me. yeah like i was like i had never and yeah. most of the guys i was saying next to they're like i go to great clips yeah. and i was and like it's a completely different world yeah it is <laughs> but i was thinking about a place like great clips is you don't know what's going to walk through the door next right. so a place like great clips like, is really good for teaching a stylist how to work quickly efficiently right. and on any kind of hair type not and Great Clips well. actually gives back, like, they are all the time doing, like, some type of, you know, like, behind the scenes, uh, raising oh. money for something. Oh, like, my see. daughter was a cleft baby, and they worked with, like, all the Great Clips in the surrounding area. We did a whole bunch of, like, news presses over it, but they, like, yeah. raised enough money to make bags with the hospital for moms who had children that were cleft. Oh, wow. Children, mm. To have, like, special bottles and all this other stuff, and so it was, like, they were a big... Yeah, you know, so people oh, like neat. like you know talk smack about it, but but in yeah. hindsight, it's but in hindsight, yeah. like besides like them, I, I don't know, I could be wrong, but aren't they on like a time limit that you have to? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the thing That's about great clips is you get paid, and I, don't quote me on this, but you get paid based on the amount of time and also your tips because really I don't think they make a whole lot per haircut mm -hmm. right. but the tips that they make I mean you figure you do 20 haircuts a day and I you bet. get tipped mm. five to ten bucks per haircut yeah hopefully plus but yeah if you can get it done in a certain amount of time I think you get bumped up on your pay or something like that so it is a time-based situation which is good it's and good. bad yeah good because not everybody can work under that kind of pressure and we see what happens right. sometimes yes. when someone Tears. can't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tears, bad fades. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I made a face. So like I've only been, I've only gotten a haircut from it's great okay, clips. Like great one. Yeah, me, too. <laughs> me too. When I was in college I used to go. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I just can't. I like, know. It's a the, completely I think well, it's a great place to, like take your kid. Yeah. You know. Because you, you don't want to spend twenty plus dollars on a kid's haircut who really doesn't care. And I think the only reason I went is because I was I was getting a brush cut and like I was like this can't get messed up, and they still messed it up. <laughs> Actually, I think they did fine. They just didn't like line it up right. Mm -hmm. I was so disappointed. And I've only like, done that one time. It was to my brother because he was turned to talking to an old teacher oh, at the oh, salon, yeah. and I got a picture for my dad later that day, and he. Took a picture of the back of his head and he's like, if you ever send my son home like this ever again, I'm like, there's no way I can fix it. No, it he like, shouldn't have moved. It was like literally his neckline was like this. <laughs> you can. You just got to bring his neckline up to yeah. his occipital. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was so embarrassed because, you know, I was like, I, I want my dad to know that, like, I'm good at what I do. <laughs> yes. And then I sent him home. I'm like, ooh. That's like the pictures I see where, like, you guys like, hey, can you, can you fix up my, like, line up here? And like you look at the guys, and like, well, you have a receding hairline, so like your hairline's like back <laughs> here. I I don't know how you think that's gonna work. I had someone the other day, and he asked the barber for a mullet, and he grew his hair out, and he yeah. really wanted to have like a good looking mullet, right. and it was really short here, and then this last piece went too straight, long, like there was no. <laughs> and so Nothing. when he took his hat off, like I, he was like first time in my chair, I could not stop. I was like, it's like. In the front, I know what's happening, but in the back, you're like Lord Farquaad. You're like, I don't know. It is so bad. True party in the back. Yeah, like it really was like, it was such a party, they couldn't even give you any. So we fixed it up. It looks good now, but I, we laugh like the whole time. Listen, I there. don't know what the deal is with the mullet, but I have to say. You like it. Having grown up with them, having had a mullet myself, yes, I did. And I rocked that bitch too. Um. I think I'm the mullet for looks it. good when people have like wavy it. hair. When it's mm. straight, I'm like Jordan. Oh, yeah, no. I think I'm. You know, I I've seen a lot of mullets running around that I mm -hmm. think look pretty darn good. It, Take me right back to high school. It <laughs> had a comeback, like right around COVID. Right, right before right. COVID, I started seeing people, and then it it hit, and they were like, "I don't want to cut my hair, so we're just gonna go with it." Yeah, That's all the, the guys were just pushing it. They right were now. like, "The only thing I don't like is the porn stash." I, I really mm, am having uh, a hard yeah, time with yeah. that. I'm seeing that everywhere. The and that and with the, the mullet just makes you look like Chester the molester. I just can't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I haven't noticed that popping up a lot more, too. And it is, like, almost in tandem. Like, if yeah. you see one, you're probably going to see the yeah. other. Yeah. And it, I, I blame um, Top Gun. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. But see, I don't know. I think it's hot. <laughs> the thing is, people don't realize, like, that's a military joke. Like, mm -hmm. all of them will get, like, the mustache. Yeah. For their, like, 
deployment. Yeah. <laughs> like if they're out there or like they're going through school, they'll they'll just grow the mustache because it's in regulations, and that's all they grow. And everyone's like, "You were on deployment, weren't you?" Mm-hmm. Well, Meanwhile, I have all brothers, and we go to a casino, and they all just do the handlebars. Yep. I'm like, y'all are idiots. Yeah. yeah. I was You're like, disgusting. No, I can't do it. I think my my goatee finally connected, so I could like. Sh- Cut this off. Looks nice. Um, but my wife would not allow that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to. It's like you can't not know them because you don't know anybody else at the casino. But yes. you're like, they're all wearing Hawaiian shirts with like. <laughs> yes. You're like, I know bars. you. I'm like, oh, can't be seen mm. with you guys. Is there any time that people come in and they ask for something like completely ridiculous? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Not a ton of people because I don't I don't actually cut a lot of men's hair mm-hmm. unless they have curls. Um but the men's hair, and I, most of my men, I've been cutting their hair for years, right. you know, so they're just like, you know, my regular little old guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but occasionally I'll have someone come in and they're like, yeah, um, I, yeah I don't even, I've had a mullet come by, a couple of mullets. Lots of mullet. Lots of mullets. Lots of, yeah, lots, curly hair mullet, which I actually made look really cool. Mm-hmm. Really cool curl. That's what I'm saying. The curly head mullets are like where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, question. This is actually semi serious. I'm 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 here okay. with all the silly ones, but now I got a serious one. Okay. If you could tell your, I'm just kidding. I'm not going for that one. Uh, I was gonna say if you take my question. <laughs> um, I'm like, oh god. <laughs> no. Being business owners, money aside, what does success look like for you guys? Um, for me, it. I just like for, when I saw her name on the cargo district mat, like that made me feel, yeah. yeah I like like that. seeing my seeing my name either like tagged in something, brought up, word of mouth, or like even just having like a client come in and be like, "Oh, so and so told me all about you," and like I just couldn't wait to get here. Like that's like I you know. So, I'm I'm gonna say what I am so proud of this girl. Mm. From seeing her start as an apprentice in a little salon in Wrightsville Beach to having not one salon or not one business, but two, I my I am like, and of course, because she's my baby girl, I am just like, it blows my mind. I am so proud of her. As a matter of fact, when I um when I drove by and saw the spot, I was I sent her a text. I was like, oh my god. Mm-hmm. Almost hit somebody, but that's okay. <laughs> Do not text and drive. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so, please. so true. But yeah. Success for me, having been in this industry almost 30 years, um, success is being able to have the freedom to make my own hours. So, yes, as a business owner, you can make your own hours. Bullshit. But create the brand that you want to create. Like, you have the freedom to decide who you want to be. Exactly. And also to to decide, I don't want to work on Saturdays anymore Mm -hmm. and still be able to pay the bills. I don't want to do men's haircuts anymore or do straight hair anymore or Mm -hmm. whatever. And I can still pay the bills. That, to me, is being able to actually have complete control over my business. Because in this industry, sometimes you don't. (laughs) Yeah. You touch on something good too, and um, we brought it up in one of our other ones. But it's always funny when like the younger generation is like, "I want to run my own business, so I don't have to work nine to five. And I was like, "Oh, okay, so you want to work twenty four seven then?" Yeah, right. so that's yes. that's what you're trading. Yeah, yeah. that and, is very true. It is true, and it's hard for other people that are your friends or family to understand mm-hmm. that like sometimes now they'll pay. But like, if I have a client that's got to get on a flight at like eight o'clock in the morning, I'm like, you can pay for me to come in early if I will do that for you. Yes. Right. Yeah. And but there like, is an extra charge for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes it's be. like late at night. I'm like watching videos about like, I'll get stressed out before weddings because I just want it to go perfect. Mm-hmm. Right. I'll watch videos just to keep like educating myself on like, what could I do better? How could I do their color better? How could I do this haircut better? Like the night before. Yeah. And it never stops. Yeah. Like we're in that type of industry where it's like, we're not going to conventions all the time to learn, but like we're self Teaching, mm-hmm. self-learning, still diving, checking in with, oh, yeah. with God. It does never stop. Oh, yeah. It mm-hmm. really it doesn't. And it should never stop. If you go to a hairstylist who <laughs> literally has not been in a class or watching a webinar. Or, or not l- still learning. Or not still learning, then you're Run. with a hairstylist that mm-hmm. has no passion for their industry. Mm-hmm. You have to. And, and this is an industry that takes passion because you can't 
work with people who we are literally exchanging energy with, mm -hmm. you know, and the thing is, I don't think you realize that each client that comes in is in a different mood. So your, your energy is doing this all day Rolling long. Out, yeah. mm -hmm. So this is so much more than just doing hair. You know, mm. the amount of time that people have either we've laughed to death or like cried and mm -hmm. oh my god, yeah. just imagine, they yeah. like, and then I'll I always I try not to cry, but like it gets me because you just like you you connect in this way that like people don't understand. There, see, this is why there's licensed therapists. They probably know how to like cut that like emotion off when they're mm -hmm. like helping someone, and then we're over there. We're like, yeah, I know. Just, <laughs> like with, you would have hugged there with my crystals. <laughs> yeah, <You're> right. <laughs> Saging, like walking them out the door to their car, like hugging them and kissing yeah. them by. Yeah. Yeah. Going that through the so tissues. Sweet. Yeah. I don't know where we were at. Oh, so we, that's the podcast. <laughs> Can I say, yeah, that's, a, that's how our podcast gets it. Um, but for our last question, though, the social one anyway, is if you could tell your younger self one thing, what would it be? Don't, don't, don't. You want to go first? Yeah. So this is going to sound really weird. I would tell my younger self to invest mm -hmm. mm. because as hairdressers, you don't get a retirement. Mm -hmm. Invest young. And I would also tell my younger self to go to med school. Right. Like, yeah. Because I had. I was like, because you went to school. Yes. I went to college. And also now I'm in school again for nutritional therapy. And so, mm. and I, I see what the. This is a total offshoot, but I see what the the medical, what our medical sy system is doing to people, mm -hmm. and it's wrong. So anyway. does that mean you learn how to do Botox and things? No, I'm <laughs> learning nutrition. <laughs> you don't need Botox. So you would it's actually. I'm Gen Z. I actually just made a new playlist for our podcast, and it's a health and wellness, mm -hmm. and it's all about like holistic health yeah. and wellness. And that's that's exactly what I would do. Is I would go into holistic health and wellness. Mm, that's awesome. But I do love what I did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> what you got for us, Amy? Um, I think mine would probably be kind of maybe listening to myself more. Like, mm -hmm. I wish I kind of, like, yeah. believed in myself more from the beginning because mm -hmm. I, I had other people that tried to, like, tell me no or, like, if mm -hmm. I... And I kind of, like, learned over the years, anytime somebody tells me no or don't think that, like, I can do it, like, I will do it. Like when people start to doubt me, there it it comes and goes, where it's like I've had family members like, no, maybe 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 you need to get like a second job, and I'm like, no, I'm gonna make this work. Yeah, right. That's right. But it took like no, a long no time. plan B. I was gonna yeah. say, there's no plan B. You can't have a plan B if you but do. But also like just being com confident back then. Like I wish I was more confident because the minute that I found it, I was unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Right. But before that. It's crazy. Yeah, like before that, I was like, anybody could tell me who I could be and what I couldn't do. And then it was like, one day I was like, no, I'm going to win an award three times in a row in town for best hairstylist. That's what I'm going to do. That's oh, awesome. And I did it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Good for you. Thanks. Congrats. I so don't have anything cool. Like, I mean, I should have invested, you know. I don't know. I think that's get no paid cool. sick days. Take yeah. more vitamins so I don't get sick. <laughs> no. We could talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... I'm sure you guys are booked up, but if you have openings for your haircut, or, well, not for me. I have oh. a barber. Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go on. I mean, I, I, we have a space in the cargo district, so of course I have a barber. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> right, right, right. right. Uh, but if something falls through, I'll come hit you guys. <laughs> okay. Up. But where can people find you guys or book time with? Um. Me? So you can go online to salonnaturalbeauty.com. dot com. Mm -hmm. And you scroll down, you see all of the peeps there, and you click under book now, whoever you want to see. And then we also have an online store. We've got educational videos on how to style, refresh your curls, things like that. So, yeah, we've got all kinds of information on our website, salonnaturalbeauty.com. Cool. Okay. I love that for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a website. So it's Helen Clutch Studio. The clutch is with a K. Right. Um, dot com, and you can also do some shopping. I mean, you can see all of our sales right now in our salon. There's two chairs, but four of us that work there. And so moving, oh, I know. So moving over, we're adding another chair, and just 
you know, because two of the two of the girls that work there are their new moms, so they're just kind of like flip flopping. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know how big I want to go from there, but I I just like it small. Like I don't want to be somebody's boss. You yeah. just pay. Oh my gosh! And you, no, you come yeah. in, you do you. Yeah. And it, it I don't just have works. to tell you how to do it. I when you find your tribe, man, yeah. gladly exactly. offer advice or if you got questions. But I'm not going to manage people anymore. Yeah. I did that mm -hmm. for a while, and it was not fun. <laughs> HelenClutchStudio.com, and that's Clutch with a K. SalonNaturalBeauty.com. <laughs> <laughs> See, we just talked about this. We don't have the competition between, <laughs> between the best I stylists. Love Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that with between the best. I feel like if we had a baby together. Up. It would be the president of the United States. Like that's how amazing well, we are. A better right? choice. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I would vote for the baby that doesn't exist right now. Yes. So we would name it Shamilia. Shamilia. Samilia. Samilia. Samilian. Oh my God. Dominguez McGee. Samilia for president. <laughs> well, thanks it. for having us. Thank, yeah, thank you guys. so much. So, this yes. was fun. Yeah, it was a great time. Yeah. yeah. Everybody watching or if you watched it live thank you for hopping on here um you can catch the recording on our youtube channel uh, mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. if you like watching it if you like listening we're on all the major things mm -hmm. and their links are in the show notes to click oh it. look how fast that happened yeah, yeah. thank you <laughs> you guys Magic are great that mm -hmm. ai thank you right. <laughs> <laughs> okay goodbye world goodbye peace <laughs>